Okay. It's really hard. <laughs> Such kids. We're Caitlin and Leah. We are both in a relationship and we are full-time TikTokers. We first met um, on Instagram. We both suffered with eating disorders at the time. There was like a community on there where everybody would like support each other and share their experiences. And Leah actually arranged a meetup in Stratford in Westfields. And she realized that I lived quite closely. Um, so she invited me to the meetup and we got on really, really well. As soon as we left that meetup, we would be texting non-stop on the phone calls. It's like, ever since that day, we've been inseparable. We started off as friends and then eventually we realised that we both had feelings for each other. You didn't know that you liked girls at the time, did you? No, I, ha I had no idea. So it came as a shock, but I just, yeah. So we met in 2015. Um, September the 3rd. Yeah, 2015. I actually still have the train ticket because um, I used to collect all the train tickets and I'm, I just one day, like a few years later, I found it, I was like, oh my God, this is the day we met. And now you framed it, so yeah. we've got it framed. Oh, like that, yeah? We first started getting into TikTok actually because of Caitlin's cousin, Holly. She came over one weekend and her face did not leave her phone for literally the entire weekend. And we were like, Holly, what are you doing? Like, what's so interesting on your phone? And she actually showed us TikTok. Anyway, she roped us into making a few videos and we actually really enjoyed it. Probably like maybe a year later, it was kind of nearish lockdown. We thought, oh, we'll make a TikTok account just for fun. And um, yeah, it just kind of, took off from there. We, we genuinely just made it thinking that we just um, like document cute memories and make cute little videos together um, but it just we somehow managed to gain quite a few views and gain quite a few followers. Mm. So for me when Caitlin and Leah started I felt like it was a sign because unfortunately my dad died. Sorry. And um, he was the first one to do the TikToks and he was their greatest supporter and I believe that he was looking down on them and helping them to succeed. We started seeing hate at probably, for us personally, it was about 500,000 followers. Um, they would mainly be on prank videos or mental health videos. And we noticed this trend where, for instance, if someone made a hate video about us and it gained a lot of views and a lot of comments, that same day, 10 other people, 15 other people, 20 other people would make that same video and post it on their channel. And the funny thing is, if there was a nice comment or a comment saying, look, this isn't fair, these girls will get upset by seeing this, the person making the video would say, they never, they'll never see it, it's fine. Regardless of who you are, you're gonna look for the bad comments. And the annoying thing is, the bad comments are normally pushed to the top because they're the ones that sadly get the most interactions, the most likes on the comment. And they're pushed to the top and the lovely ones, nine times out of 10, are the ones further down. We've seen an increase on online hate over the last two years. We've been on the internet consistently and we want to explore the reasons why further. We want to talk to a hater, someone who receives hate, a therapist, a lawyer. I think it's important to speak to someone who sadly lost a family member due to online hate because that is the raw, real consequences that hating on somebody could lead to. We've come to the outreach agency offices to talk with TV personality star Holly Hagen about her troubles with online hate. The first kind of bit of hate that I received was, so you're talking 11 years ago, so Twitter was only just beginning, um, Facebook was kind of like the main form of social media that we all use. Um, so the first bit of hate that I ever got was um, I had Facebook groups made about me um, and the first one was when Holly Hagen washes up on the beach and it was a picture of a whale washing up on um, the beach near us called Red Car. People writing rumours about me, um, there was actually three, three people who 
corroborated this kind of story. I was in a nightclub one time and I took my tampon out on the dance floor and three different people said that this happened. Like, we're like, yeah, yeah, I was there. That did not happen. But you've got three different people saying that it did. And at this point, everyone's saying it with their chest, you know, it was Facebook, everyone's got their own names on there. These weren't trolls, these were people I lived with. Whenever I would leave the house, I would think that I would potentially bump into one of these people in the street. There was 10,000 people in this group. So I'm I'm walking around my hometown thinking, if I see one of these people in the street, they are gonna glass me, they are gonna bottle me, they are gonna do something. I don't think I left the house alone for around about two years after that. I came off Facebook as soon as the show came out. After series one, I actually nearly didn't go back. I was, I, I quit. I was like, I'm not going back. There's no way I can do this. And one of the producers rang me and they were like, look, we're, we're doing a summer special. It's only like four days. We're going to be in Magaluf. Just come. You don't want the last time that you're, you're ever on TV to be a bad time. Like you've got the opportunity to make it better. I flew out. I changed my hair color. They wanted me to dye it red to be this new Holly. I was actually that terrified of getting into an argument with anybody or getting into a fight with anybody that you will see on this, the last episode, I'm not there. And it's because I said to the producers that I felt ill because I knew there was going to be a big kickoff between the boys and the girls and I didn't want to be involved. So I pretended I felt sick and I actually went to bed. I did not want to give them housemates or the public any reason that they could turn around and say anything bad about me. Did like the hate or anything ever make you feel like you had to like change your personality or change your looks or change just like your whole self because of the comments? Yeah, I felt like I had to change every single part of me. I mean, the first thing that obviously I wanted to change was was be, being seemingly fat, apparently. So the fat slag comments, I was like, look, I can deal with slag. I've had sex with people on TV, whatever. But the fat comments used to really get to me and I've always had an issue with my weight from being very young. So I thought, right, okay, if I can just not be fat, then if, I, if I'm if i slim, then maybe the trolling will stop. So I tried everything that I possibly could to become thinner. When I did become thinner, throughout all the time of like having an eating disorder and everything, I became bulimic um, for probably about five years. Then I slowly realised that the comments, they don't stop, they just change into something else. It went from fat slag to she's lost too much weight, she looked better before. Um, I went and got, I went and had surgery and all these different things to try and change the way that I looked. I had fillers and everything completely overfilled my face. And then it was only kind of like, I'd say maybe five years ago that I was like, okay, maybe I'm not the problem. <laughs> maybe that, maybe, maybe I'm not the issue here. Maybe I have to look a little bit deeper and realise that no matter what I do, somebody is going to find something to say about it. I could be fat, thin, somebody is going to comment. I could be pretty in one person's eyes and I could be ugly in another. Somebody is going to have something to say. But it did not matter because I realised that the problem was never me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking part in this documentary and just answering all of our questions. It's definitely going to help a lot of people, I think. Definitely. Yeah, I really think it is. And thank you so much for reaching out and asking. I'm more than happy to chat any time about these kind of issues. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to watch it and good luck for the rest of the series. That was very interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. Feel, it might, I feel it makes me feel heavy. Mm. Yeah, it's it's interesting to like see other people that have experienced it and like the extent that it can go to. I just enjoy how TikTok is so diverse and you can share multiple things on there and like we enjoy sharing about our relationship and mental health but we also want to touch on other topics such as like online hate and bring awareness to it so that hopefully it will help others and allow others to like start the conversation and maybe speak about their experiences with online hate as well. Do you want to talk about sort of some of your favourite um, things you like to watch on TikTok away from 
maybe your own type yeah. of genre. I really enjoy watching like factual TikToks or uh, medical TikToks. I don't know, it's really random. Like, why do we sneeze or something? Like, uh, I just really enjoy watching random factual ones. You'll be up until like two in the morning watching that. Mm. Whereas you like watching completely different things. Yeah, I'm the complete opposite. This is going to be really weird, but... I know what you're going to say. What? Is it like pimple popping or something? Yeah. <laughs> we watch things completely yeah. different to what we post. Ditch Label is one of the largest youth charities in the world. The idea of Ditch Label actually came about when I was 15. Bullied myself at school for 10 years and, you know, I really struggled with my confidence, my mental health, my body image. And I started to talk about my experiences online and I literally had hundreds of people message me to tell me that they were experiencing similar things. But then people started to ask me for advice and started to give me advice and so I realised that there was a massive opportunity to use the internet as a really powerful tool to connect people together. And so at the age of 15, I came up with the idea of Ditch Label. I would say over the past 10 years, online hate has definitely become more common, more normalised, but also more extreme. Especially if we take the lens view of the pandemic. Uh, what we found throughout the pandemic is that people did become more hateful. The cases that we were dealing with were far more extreme than we've ever dealt with before. Online violent threats increased by 10% in the UK. Asian hate increased by over 1600%, which was the largest rise in on any form of hate speech. Uh, we pretty much saw rises across every single form of hate. And it's terrifying because it's going in the wrong direction. It should be going in the opposite direction. But you know, kind of when we start to extrapolate the reasons why we know people bully, it's also not particularly surprising. My name is Maya Carter and I do body positivity on TikTok and self-love. I got into doing body positivity and self-love because I feel like there's not enough on it on social media. It's always filter, nice body, nice bum, big boobs. It's not, you know, bodies are real. My videos go quite viral in different, in different countries. So a lot of hate I get in different languages and I always, I always translate them. I normally don't because as soon as I see a laughing face, I know it's gonna be a hate comment. And it's crazy for the amount of stuff I say, people, you know, telling me to go wash because I have a skin condition, it darkens my skin. And I get told to kill myself. I get called the N word all the time, called a whale. It just made me feel like I felt so upset and so sad, like people actually do that. There has been a few accounts that I have reported and it has got taken down, but it, you have to keep on reporting it. And you can clearly see by the name and by the video, it is a hate account. Hi, I'm Soph from Soph Does Life. That's some of my social platform names. I think that one of the big reasons why people are sending hate to other people, a lot of the time it does stem from jealousy. Not always, because some people are just, I guess, nasty people and want to pick on others and get a buzz from that, I don't know. I do think that online hate is getting worse. I've had people comment on my body and my body type, my face and picking at different parts of how I look. Especially during lockdown, around that time, I think the hate comments picked up a lot because a lot of people were obviously frustrated, which is completely understandable, but I think some people were taking their frustrations out on people that they were following online. I think during lockdown, I was getting more hate than ever, I think. I don't know about other people, but I definitely had days where I would read a particular message and just cry about it. One time, it was just before sort of lockdown and everything, I'd been on a trip with a brand and they had posted a picture of all the girls from the trip on their page. And I remember going onto the page and reading the comments thinking, oh, I wonder what people have said. And people were just talking about my body and how my head was too big for my body and how they were saying, oh, she doesn't fit in with the other girls. Why would they take her on this trip? She doesn't have the right body type or something. And I remember reading those comments and just crying to my parents thinking, what is wrong with me? I don't fit in with everyone. I feel like I don't belong in the social media world because of all these beautiful people. Like I'm not, you know, I don't have the same body type as them. And it even got to the point where I don't think I've even mentioned this online before, but I'm happy to say it now because I'm in a much better place. I was looking into booking a consultation to get a boob job because of, I had been made to feel so down about my body shape and I was comparing myself to all these other people and just seeing some of those comments I think really 
set me over the edge a bit. Now I'm in a much better place with that and I think I'm quite lucky that at the time I had my family there to support me, I had my partner there to support me and my friends and I had a good support network around me but I can really see how if you are someone on social media, not even a uh, influencer or creator or anything that if you do get a negative comment from somebody just one comment can set you over the edge and send you spiraling and if you don't have that support network around you then it can be really difficult. Bullying is about ultimately about power and control and some people want that power and control and they feel when they get it, they get a buzz from having that power and control. I've had people who've specifically come with cyberbullying, but it's not always obvious straight away in therapy. So something has been happening to a child and the parents are very concerned, but they don't actually know what. And as the course of therapy unfolds, actually I have learnt that it was on um, Snapchat and somebody was made themselves vulnerable to people and talked about their mental health and people then actually started targeting that person about their mental health, that young person, and then actually started victimising them. And that then developed into like a group of people bullying them, which actually made the young person very socially anxious and avoidant of people. Your name, who your daughter is and and what, what happened, the, the reason why you're here today. Mm -hmm. 